So Bert, you brought us here to an estate. You used to be the head keeper. Yep. And you're going to show me the benefits of Moor Burns hill keepering. Yep. Yeah. So, if possible. So what are we going to expect to see? Well, it'll just be with luck, Andy. I mean, it's like any other day. There are some days you go and there's a lot. Some days there's not a lot. Right. Um, we'll certainly be able to show you the, the different uh, ages of heather and how it's burnt and why it's burnt and stuff, hopefully. Yeah. Um, with a bit of luck, we'll see maybe see a blue hair or a um, curlews and lapwings, etc. Yeah. Um, there's snipe. We're going to have to be very sneaky to catch up on a lot of this right. stuff because we did here a lot of time today. That's right. That's um, right. But we'll try our best. But we'll take a wander out through the, the shoulder of this hill here and just see what we can find. Right. Yeah. But as you can see, it's it's well burnt, it's well maintained. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, different heather there. It's grazed with sheep all through the summer and the winter, but the winter they're brought down and fed blocks at the bottom. Uh -huh. So it doesn't get a hell of a lot of sheep damage. Mm -hmm. Um but with the sheep on it, it keeps the grass back a bit. Eh? And and you do you do actually get quite a few grouse off of this. Bit. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you'll get you know, it's not it's not a, an intensive moor. It's not intensive we looked after, but it's it's well maintained, mm -hmm. and we will get a, a fifty brace on our best days. Right, that's good going. Oh, you know, it's good going. Yeah. It's good going for a wee moor. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, let's jump in the van and go and have a look. Let's go. We, let's we go and have find. a look. Let's go and wear our legs out. <laughs> right. <laughs> What you're seeing here is what all the controversy is about concerning heather burning and CO2 emissions. Now, all that that you're seeing there is burnt heather, all these patches, different colour, at different ages. And where it all starts off is here, in the longer heather. And if you look into this longer heather, there is nothing in there except debris. There's nothing lives in there, there's no insects or anything really living in there that anything wants. You'll very seldom see any creatures living in here, maybe an odd lizard or a, an adder or something like that. So we burn that. And what happens after we burn it is it clears the ground. Now when it clears the ground, what you've got, first of all, is the blaeberries and the bulberries. They all come up first. And then here you see young shoots of heather. Then there'll be flowers and grasses will appear on this. And all these flowers and grasses and, and uh, other plants all help insects to thrive. If the insects thrive, so does all the other birds. And once it's at that stage, that's about two years old. Here you are at about four or five years old. And as you can see, the heather has got up to four or five inches. You have bits of here with, with flowers starting to grow. Um, all your grasses are getting more and more. So it's more seeds, more food for the birds, more insects. You'll hear in the press and stuff about how wildfires and there's a lot of damage and the heather burning is very dangerous, etc. Well, it is. But the gamekeepers are a wee bit smarter than just throw down a match and walk away home. They do this in their controlled manner. And what you're looking at here is a machine has come over here on the day that they were going to burn and cut the heather. What happens there is the sap rises up through the newly cut heather and makes it wet. Once that's been made a surround, the gamekeeper then comes in, takes a favorable wind and lights his fire. And the fire is contained within this cut. Therefore, it's under control. On an area which is not managed like this, the wildfire, as has again been seen in the media, will burn for days and go for miles. So it is really important that these fires are set as fire breaks, if nothing else. Now, you'll hear a lot of controversy again about hill roads. Now, hill roads are really essential because there's a lot of people other than gamekeepers using these hills. There's shepherds, there's guys coming out to do fencing. Um, there's loads of reasons for vehicles being on the hill. And if you don't make a road, and you come up and you make tracks, and with the torrential rain that we've been having all these past years, this is what happens. 
it takes, it cuts the road away and the erosion is really, really bad. So the best thing to do is to make this a road, make it in a, a nice hump in the middle, it sheds the water to the side and it disperses into the heather and doesn't do any damage. So there really is a call for hill roads.